But I never think about dead people. Looking at these old graves makes me think how generation after generation of the same family are all gathered together. And that makes me think about how life goes on, but not about dying. I never think about dying. John Berend, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Welcome to the Erie USA podcast. I'm your host, author Evan Camby. I write horror and suspense books, and I'm the creator of this podcast, where we discuss American legends, hauntings, and folklore. In today's episode, we're going to visit a cemetery known for its beauty as well as its ghosts. Bonaventure Cemetery in the ghostly city of Savannah, Georgia. Located on the 17 mile long Wilmington River, about three miles from downtown Savannah, there is a fascinatingly beautiful cemetery that some have described as a natural cathedral with its stoic and tall oak trees cloaked in Spanish moss, which line the winding paths in the cemetery. It lends a haunting allure to the many elaborate and time-stained graves without. To offset the grays and gloominess, there are vibrant azaleas and camellias bursting with color when they bloom in the spring and summer. While this description from a website might sound too flowery to be true, America's most haunted cemetery is truly renowned for its natural, ethereal beauty. Perhaps most recognizable is the source of the cover photo for the famous true crime novel, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Bonaventure Cemetery is a visually striking place. No one can argue about that. But on paper, it reads like many country graveyards. Bonaventure is a rural cemetery located on a scenic bluff of the Wilmington River, east of Savannah, Georgia. Its prominence grew when it was featured in the 1994 novel Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Barrett, and in the subsequent movie which was directed by Clint Eastwood and based on the book. And at nearly 160 acres, it is the largest of the city's municipal cemeteries. Originally called Evergreen Cemetery, Bonaventure was a private commercial enterprise. It was established in 70 acres of the original Bonaventure Plantation when it became obvious the city's existing cemeteries were nearing capacity. The land was first purchased in 1762 by a politically active British loyalist named John Mulrean. After the American War of Independence came to an end, those loyal to the British crown began to face persecution, and his land was seized by local authorities and auctioned off to the public. Originally part of the plantation owned by Mulrean, in 1846, Commodore Josiah Tattnall III sold the 600-acre plantation and its private cemetery to Peter Wiltberger. The first burials took place in 1850, and three years later, Peter Wiltberger himself was entombed there in a family vault. Major William H. Wiltberger, the son of Peter, formed the Evergreen Cemetery Company on June 12, 1868. On July 7, 1907, the city of Savannah purchased the Evergreen Cemetery Company, making the cemetery public and changing the name to Bonaventure Cemetery. 
It was the fourth of the five cemeteries the city currently owns. Since then, it has expanded from the original 60 acres to over 100 acres. And the cemetery has been redesigned by the city of Savannah to provide a greater number of grave sites and more efficient maintenance than could be offered by the original evergreen design. And it's still an active cemetery today. And that citizens of Savannah and others may still purchase internment rights at Bonaventure. The cemetery is open to the public daily from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and there is no admission fee. Adjacent to Bonaventure Cemetery is the privately owned and newer Forest Lawn Cemetery and Columbarium. Notable burials at Bonaventure include Marie Louise Scudder Merrick, the first female owner, editor, and publisher of a southern U.S. newspaper, the America's Times Recorder, as well as Claudius Charles Wilson, Civil War Confederate Brigadier General, silent film actress Edith Chapman, and numerous Spanish-American war veterans. In fact, Bonaventure is the nation's second largest area dedicated to those killed in the Spanish-American War. But the most famous internment by far is that of Gracie Watson, who has a famous statue at her gravesite. Gracie Watson was the daughter of W.J. and Francis Watson. They managed the Pulaski Hotel, now demolished, that was once on Johnson Square in Savannah. In life, she was often found playing in the hotel, entertaining guests. Or she would head outside to the square and play amongst the trees. She was known as the unofficial greeter for the Pulaski Hotel. Little Gracie, as she's still sometimes called, tragically died two days before Easter in 1889 of pneumonia. Her parents were understandably devastated, and her father commissioned a sculpture by John Waltz to create his daughter's grave marker. This is the famous statue on the cover of Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. And Gracie's grave is still the most popular site in the cemetery to this day. The cemetery was designed in a traditional Victorian style with curving pathways, lots of trees, and grassy areas. Although it is a cemetery, it's still common for families to meet and picnic there while providing a place of comfort and solace for the bereaved of those who are buried there. According to some legends, the cemetery is not just a place of solace, but of restless spirits as well. Bonaventure Cemetery dates all the way back to the mid-1800s when it was a private property, a plantation, places that are not known for positive energy or good things. Later purchased by the city in 1907, it is the very spot where preservationist and naturalist John Weir spent several nights in 1867, where he wrote his book, A Thousand Mile Walk to the Gulf, in the chapter, Camping in the Tombs. Bonaventure is rumored to be the home of many spirits, including a pack of ghostly dogs and the spirit of Gracie Watson. People often pay their respects to Gracie by placing flowers, money, or trinkets in the hands of her life-sized statue. In one of the most outlandish stories, in one of the most outlandish versions of the story, it is said that the statue cries tears of blood if any of her gifts are removed from her hands. Thank you.
Still, stories persist that say death hasn't stopped little Gracie Watson from greeting people who come to Savannah, nor does it stop her from playing in her once beloved square. The ghost of little Gracie has been seen in Johnson Square many times over the years, and she is arguably the most famous spectral resident of Bonaventure. But there are allegedly other ghosts as well. One legend says that the ghost of Corinne Elliot Lawson also haunts the grounds. Like Gracie, her grave marker is a sorrowful statue and a tourist attraction. I'll read a clip from an article from Savannah Now that I'll post in the show notes, which describes this legend. Corinne was the daughter of Confederate Brigadier General Alexander R. Lawton. The popular legend is that 19-year-old Corinne had fallen in love with a man that her family didn't approve of and was forced to marry someone wealthier and with a better position in society. Corinne was so despondent about marrying a man she didn't love that she flung herself into a river and drowned. There are many variations to this story, each more tragic and melodramatic than the next. In one version, Corinne kills herself on her wedding day. In another, she rides her horse into the Savannah River. Yet another has Corinne drowning in the Wilmington River within sight of where she is currently buried. As is often the case, the truth is not as dramatic, but it is as tragic. According to the diary of Corinne's mother, she actually died at home from an illness, quite possibly yellow fever since the epidemic was just ending at the time of her death in 1877. Corinne's grave in Bonaventure is quite arresting, with a beautiful, lifelike statue by famed Sicilian sculptor Benedetto Civiletti. The statue, created from a photo of Corinne, depicts her sitting at the foot of a cross with her dress falling from her shoulder and a crown of flowers dropped from her hand. The dramatic detail of Corinne being engaged before her death is true. However, Unlike the details of some of the stories we talk about, she actually wanted to get married. Corinne's mother and father loved her very much and created a touching monument to their heartbreaking loss. That's the end of that article clip. The stories of Gracie and Corinne are great examples of a lot of what we talk about on this podcast about how true stories can warp over time and turn into enduring legends. Even in a city full of ghost stories, the legends of Gracie and Corinne stand out among the rest. The 100 acres of Bonaventure Cemetery have drawn generations of visitors over many years. Some even say to this day that a visit to Savannah is incomplete without a stop at Bonaventure Cemetery. With 800,000 people a year exploring the over 100 acres of natural splendor mixed with statues, ironwork, and some of Savannah's most famous graves, it is understandable why this is one of the top tourist attractions in the city. The Bonaventure Historical Society was created in 1992 by a retired Savannah school teacher and friends. Their mission has always been the preservation and conservation of Savannah's historic Bonaventure Cemetery. To help accomplish this, their dedicated volunteers host the Visitor's Center every weekend and give free guided tours each month. If, like me, you are planning a trip to Savannah someday, consider joining them on one of the official cemetery tours 
and see just why people claim that Bonaventure is America's most beautiful and most haunted cemetery. I'll leave you with a few more words from John Barron's Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. You mustn't be taken in by the moonlight and magnolias. There's more to Savannah than that. Things can get very murky. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Erie USA podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and leave us a review. Consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash evancamby, where I share one exclusive piece of behind the scenes content every week for less than the price of a fancy coffee. For more scary stories, be sure to check out my books on Amazon. My horror story collection, Walking After Midnight, Tales for Halloween, is available and the entire series is in ebook and paperback format, anywhere from 99 cents to 9.99. I hope you join us for the next episode where we'll be visiting San Diego's Whaley House, a California historical landmark and museum and what some call the most haunted house in all of America. Until next time, I'm your host, Evan Camby, bringing you America's forgotten places and forgotten people.